Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a Spanish crime thriller film, Orianes Secretos. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Detective is a father of two sons. His eldest son was a SWAT officer and a real hero. Two years ago, a fire broke out in a building in Madrid. The eldest son died when he rushed into the fire to save people before firefighters arrived at the scene. Detective's heart was torn to pieces from then on. His younger son is a fat nerd obsessed with quadratic elements, nicknamed Greasy Beard. He is running a comic book store and likes outlandish things. When he hears about the Chinese-made electric batons, he immediately purchases them online. In the eyes of the father detective, Greasy Beard is nothing close to his elder son. Whenever he looks at Greasy Beard's beard, he is reminded of the eldest son who always did him proud. Ever since the passing of the eldest son, Detective has been more lenient to Greasy Beard. He feels thankful for the fact that Greasy Beard is still safe and sound. Detective's retirement is just around the corner. A young and handsome officer, short named Officer Handsome, will take over his position. Officer Handsome used to work in a small city. This gorgeous man likes boxing. Until Detective retires, Officer Handsome will work under his guidance. Right now, they have a difficult case to handle. Residents from a secluded apartment complain that their upstairs neighbor lifts the barbells every night. Furthermore, the hallway stinks recently. Detective and Officer Handsome arrive at the place and locate a big and gray corpse. Judging from the scene, the victim's neck appears to have been broken accidentally while he bench lifted a barbell. There is no other clue in the room except many tins of protein powder. In fact, it is not an accidental death. The victim was a scrawny physicist who ran a chemical factory. One year ago, he was reported missing. It does not make sense that he hides in this particular room only to exercise himself. The coroner confirms their preposition that this man was murdered. Coroner theorizes that the killer grabbed the victim, fed him protein powder on purpose, forced him to work out, and left him with bulging lines all over his body. Since he was fed with prohibited drugs, his skin turned gray. While the two detectives wonder about the motive of the murderer, a cool and pretty cosplayer steps into the lab. She scolds Detective for taking up such a case and orders him to retire tomorrow. This domineering beauty, named Pretty, is Officer Handsome Immediate Superior. She graduated with the best result from the police academy and is now the youngest and prettiest head of major crimes in Madrid. The interesting contrast to her career professionalism comes from her hobby of cosplaying comic characters. In the afternoon, another strange murder case is reported. The victim was a wealthy armor maker. His heart was removed and his body stuffed inside an armor. It was kept alive with a machine. There was a newspaper clip stick on his head. Officer Handsome cannot help but think if the culprit is mimicking Jack the Ripper. The investigation gets nowhere. While the team is stuck at the present cases, Greasy Beard spots an important clue. Detective vows to fulfill his mission, though he is told to retire. When he studies the cases at home, Greasy Beard glances at the photo and finds the dead man looks like the Incredible Hulk. He introduces that the first issue of the Hulk in the 60s was gray. It is the same for the Iron Man. Detective is enlightened that perhaps the two cases are related to the comic books. He then returns to the crime scene for a detailed investigation. Below the exercise machine, he finds a piece of newspaper clip. To his surprise, it is the cover of the first Hulk issue. Along with the cover, there is a note bearing the message Orihenes Secretos, which means unknown origins. The first murder is a parody of the Hulk's origin story. The second murder is a parody of Iron Man's origin story. Detective informs Pretty about his discoveries and suggests that she should recruit Greasy Beard for the investigation. He knows very well that Officer Handsome has zero knowledge about comics. Pretty approves the plan, but Officer Handsome is apparently not very happy with this arrangement. In his opinion, to be obsessed with comics as an adult is what he considers unprofessional. Despite his personal preference, he has to admit that Greasy Beard is of great help for the case. The duo visit the Iron Man murder scene together. Greasy Beard is so familiar with the weapons at the place that he can name them one by one. He introduces to Officer Handsome the Conan Sword, Hanzo Martial Arts Sword, Ice, etc. At a glance, he finds one of the collections appears at the wrong place. In the section for the Lord of Rings, there is an extra axe that belongs to Triangle. Obviously, this is a clue given by the murderer. They take the axe for further examination. Three fingerprints are found on the axe, but it takes time to identify the culprit. While waiting, Officer Handsome decides to read up on the origin of those superheroes at Greasy Beard's comic book shop. Coincidentally, he runs into Pretty at the store. She is giving a lecture on cosplayer fashion design. Officer Handsome thinks they are wasting time on such a matter. 
but the comics fans laugh at him? To his surprise, the comic fans are not losers, but elites in their own field. Among them, there is dentist, professor, judge, CEO, and so on. The CEO challenges Officer Handsome and shows him photos of his sports car in mansions. That is a mind opener and a paradigm shift for Officer Handsome. Returning home, he begins to study the origin of those superheroes. Soon after, Pretty receives the report on the fingerprints. They belong to a murderer that burnt six innocent lives to death and cunningly defended himself before the judges. In the end, he was only jailed for six months. Without further ado, Officer Handsome and Pretty immediately take Greasy Beard to search the arsonist's whereabouts. Unfortunately, when they arrive, the house is already burnt. Smoke billows from the arsonist's house, and a foul, scorched smell wafts from it. Not only that, but they also hear a heart-wrenching scream. In the chaos, Officer Handsome almost kisses Pretty. Greasy Beard is totally envious of him. But immediately after, they get up to put off the fire. Wrapped in a sealed suit, unable to move, the arsonist is burned alive. Greasy Beard discovers a book cover on a machine, and recognizes it as the first issue of the Fantastic Four, the origin story of the Firebolt. Coroner says that the machine is very complicated. It controls heat to burn the arsonist for three days and three nights, which is very cruel. The killer is believed to be a psychopath. But the investigation has no breakthrough. Officer Hansom mentions that they should get detective's help. Pretty reveals that detective is diagnosed with cancer, and the stress would kill him faster. That is why she forces detective to go for early retirement. Officer Hansom feels sorry for detective, and gets a bottle of wine for him. Over lunch, Detective asks Officer Handsome why he chooses to be a police officer. Officer Handsome recalls that his parents were shot dead, right after they came out of the theater after a movie. Until now the killer has not been caught. He starts the police career with a dream to eradicate lawlessness and violence. But police policy doesn't allow employees to see their own files, so he doesn't know anything about the killer. Greasy Beard finds such a rule absurd, and urges Officer Handsome to seek help from Pretty. As expected, Pretty is willing to retrieve Officer Handsome's profile. Surprisingly, there is actually a photo of the cover of a comic book in the file. Greasy Beard tells them it is the origin story of the Batman. This means that whoever killed his parents 20 years ago is probably the same person or the same group as the three murder cases they are investigating. Officer Handsome denies such an idea. He wonders why the murderer tortures him and what he would do next. Pretty analyzes that the murderer must be very rich. The equipment for the heart transplant, the human barbecue equipment, all cost a lot of money. She points out that maybe they should begin the search with rich comic book fans. Greasy Beard agrees, for collecting these comics for publication also requires a lot of money. So they visit a man to get more information. This guy knows who buys those expensive comic books at the auctions. He is confident that the only one who has the aforementioned collections is a real estate tycoon in Madrid. Greasy Beard wants to be a hero like the comic book character but Officer Handsome sends him home and journeys to Tycoon's house alone. In a gloomy warehouse, he finds many clips of comic books, including the one for Batman, Tetev 33. All of a sudden, Officer Handsome spots a man and shoots at him. Little does he know the man is already dead, and his rash actions trigger the toxic gas to leak out. Then a man in a plague doctor mask, swoons and eerily congratulates Officer Handsome on finally finding the villain's lair. Unfortunately, Officer Handsome is rendered powerless due to inhaling the toxic gas. Officer Handsome sneers at him and challenges him to identify himself. The guy says he is Professor Novaro. In a pinch, Pretty arrives at the warehouse and shoots the plague doctor mask, rescuing Officer Handsome. The masked man pretends to collapse and soon escapes with a laugh. It turns out that Greasy Beard worries about Officer Handsome's safety and alerts Pretty of Officer Handsome's movement. Officer Handsome is so touched that he almost kisses Pretty's smelly face. Looking around the warehouse, they find two more comic books, namely X-Men, Spider-Man, have not appeared in the crime scenes. Both books deal with mutants and nuclear radiation. Greasy Beard infers that the next murder case would have to do either mutants or nuclear radiation. Other than that, they have no idea who the next target is. Coroner confirms that Tycoon died a few years ago, but his corpse was freshly removed from formaldehyde. It shows that the murderer has been committing crimes in the name of Tycoon. More importantly, Coroner has detected nuclear radiation from Tycoon's body. Pretty concludes this case would be handed to the National Security Council. Officer Handsome is unwilling to give up, for he is so close to the murderer of his parents. And then, Coroner offers that he could extend the deadline by delaying the report submission. He is willing to take the risk, for he also looks forward to making some progress. Everything's set, Officer Handsome is again out for the hunt alone. 
Pretty decides to join him, but he stops her with a kiss. Officer Handsome explains that he does not want Pretty to stick her neck out for him again. Pretty now totally falls for him, but actually is hormones. That afternoon, another victim is reported on television. A juvenile released from prison was hung from the ceiling of the station in a bizarre way. Officer Handsome can tell that his death takes after the origin story of Spider-Man. Only one more day is left, and Officer Handsome becomes frustrated. Greasy Beard is more shrewd to find the connections of all five murder cases. 20 years ago, the culprit started with killing Officer Handsome's parents, following the Spider-Man story. And then, the killer restarted the killing, until Officer Handsome was transferred to the Madrid police station. Along the way he has hidden clues for Officer Handsome to investigate. So the psycho must have planned to create a superhero to highlight his supervillain skills. Officer Handsome criticizes Greasy Beard for mixing up the real world with the comic books, and storms out of the bookstore. Returning to his car, he realizes what Greasy Beard says might be helpful. In fact, there is nothing much he could do for the present case. Seeking Greasy Beard's help, he attends the 10th year anniversary of the comic book store. Greasy Beard prepares a superhero suit for Officer Handsome, and calls him the Triangle Man. Officer Handsome does not like this name for sure. But he humbly asks Greasy Beard what to do next. Greasy Beard predicts that the villain would create an emergency, and force him to rescue his loved ones. Immediately after, Pretty rushes into the bookstore, with the bad news that Detective has been kidnapped. Seconds later, Officer Handsome receives a call from the Plague Doctor, saying that Detective is now kept in the Tower of the Reservoir. In line with Greasy Beard's analysis, Plague Doctor tells Officer Handsome to grab this one last chance to become a superhero. Furthermore, he has already slipped radioactive elements into the Comic-Con drinks. If Officer Handsome does not turn up, he is gonna dump radioactive elements into the entire city's water supply. While Officer Handsome is still engaged with a phone call, all the participants who have taken the drink, collapse down suddenly. Greasy Beard cannot wait to rescue his father, but Officer Handsome and Pretty order him to stay back. Greasy Beard then gives Officer Handsome the SWAT officer suit of his elder brother. Pretty pulls the CEO out from his sports car, and deploys it for the mission. In the reservoir, the masked man reveals his agenda of creating the X-Men. Detective is taken as the Professor X. Detective is shocked to realize that the series murderer is actually their colleague, Coroner. As an antisocial comic book fan, he believes that only a superhero could save this corrupted generation. So he commits himself to make a superhero. He tells Detective that his masterpiece will soon arrive to fight against him, and he will be more than willing to fall before the superhero. Detective condemns him for killing innocent lives, but Coroner insists that all of them are badass deserving of a death sentence. The physics professor dumped chemicals nearby a primary school, causing dozens of lives. The armor maker was a drug dealer. The arsonist escaped punishment by telling lies. The juvenile a ruthless dismemberment maniac. But no one curbs such evildoers. Coroner claims that they definitely need a superhero to purify the world. And then, Coroner calmly injects drugs in his face, then dips his face into strong acid to disfigure himself. He proclaims that Heath Ledger is the real saint. Having done that, he puts on the mask, and guns down Detective when Officer Handsome arrives. As Officer Handsome puts on the SWAT suit, Detective mistakes him as his eldest son. He gives up his breath in the arms of Officer Handsome. Soon after, Officer Handsome wrestles with Coroner, and is soon beaten down. To retaliate, he takes out the electric baton. But Coroner takes over the baton to abuse him. Strangely enough, Coroner has no intention to kill him. Instead, he pretends to slip his foot, smashing the railing and falling off the tower. According to the script in his mind, he begs the superhero to save his life. Filled with wrath and hatred, Officer Handsome puts on his mask, and says he is the Triangle Man. Knowing that a superhero is born, the mask corner willing falls into the acid pool, and disappears. This is exactly the same scene in the comics, where the Joker falls into a pool of acid. However, it is unclear whether Coroner has died. Very likely he would prepare enough to survive the acid, and continue with his heinous plot. After the funeral of Detective, the trio receives breaking news. The masked coroner has left behind a tycoon's mansion and huge assets. In the basement of his mansion, they find a computer system that can hack into governments around the world. And so the journey of the Triangle Man begins now. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.